Hello to all physics enthusiasts and fans of physical experiments. This is Andrei Shketnikov, and today we will explore the mechanics and physics of this wonderful device that we built at the suggestion of one of our subscribers, known to us only by the nickname Machete22. And he lives in the city of Engels, Saratov Oblast. He even helped us with the drawings. This device is a planetary gear system with two degrees of freedom. I can easily fix the central gear using the handle, and then the two side gears, which are securely mounted on the carrier, will roll around it precisely like this. I can hold the carrier with my hand, and then I will rotate the handle, causing the central gear to rotate along with the side satellite gears with my hand. And there is also, besides mechanics, an important physical detail. Two weights and additional components eccentrics that are installed on the side gear satellites. Moreover, everything is designed so that they end up together at the center and together at the periphery. Now let's see how this device essentially works. I hold onto the handle and forcefully start the carrier with the satellites. Now I begin to pump the handle. The key here is to get into the right rhythm. The rotation is maintained, and even gradually, by pumping the handle faster and faster, I can make the system rotate more quickly, just like that. It's a kind of railway draisine. And it is clear that the eccentrics play a fundamental role here. I have removed them now, so how can I try my best? I won't be able to get anything spinning, and now I have nothing to match the rhythm with, because before I matched the rhythm precisely with their rotation. Let's record the operation of this device on a high-speed camera. And now it is clearly visible that one swing of the lever corresponds to four rotations of the carrier, while the eccentrics move away from the central gear and return to it during this time. And when the eccentrics pass by the central gear, the lever moves towards the carrier. And when the eccentrics move outward, the lever moves in the same direction as the carrier. To understand the role of the eccentrics, let's conduct this experiment. I secured the central axis so that it could not rotate and installed photo sensors on the setup that will measure the angular velocity of the carrier. And now, I start the recording and rotate the carrier with all my strength and effort. And on the graph of angular velocity, we see that the rotation of the carrier occurs unevenly. Of course, there is a general slowdown due to energy losses. But against this background, there are strong pulsations. So during one period of such pulsations, the angular velocity changes by almost two times. And if we add the angle graph here, it becomes clear that each such pulsation occurs over four revolutions of the carrier, i.e. during one return of the eccentrics to the central gear. Well, it is understandable that in a closed rotating system, the angular momentum must be conserved, which is equal to the product of the moment of inertia and the angular velocity. But the truth is, our system is not closed. Due to friction, the angular momentum slowly decreases. However, over one cycle, it still does not change significantly. And this is where the change in the moment of inertia comes into play. When the eccentrics approach close to the axis, the moment of inertia is small, so the angular velocity must increase sharply. And when the eccentrics move far from the axis, the moment of inertia significantly increases and the angular velocity decreases accordingly. It turns out that in such a system, in addition to rotation, there are also peculiar oscillations. Where there are oscillations, resonance is also possible. If the system is driven by an external force at the same frequency and in the correct phase, but this system has an interesting distinction from a pendulum and many other oscillatory systems. It consists in the fact that it has no natural frequency of oscillation. One oscillation of the eccentrics outward, inward, outward, inward occurs over four revolutions of the lever. And here we go. We will spin this system again, and we will start pumping energy into it with the right pushes. And I can do all of this faster and faster, very quickly and extremely fast. How quickly can I move the lever back and forth? Faster, 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 faster. Well, I can't go any faster. Who came up with such a strange device? It was the American inventor William Skinner, who built a kind of gravity machine in 1939, with which he intended to obtain 1,200 units of energy at the output for 100 units of energy at the input. 
Of course, the law of conservation of energy does not allow for this. However, Skinner created an efficient energy accumulator that uses resonant rocking and the law of conservation of angular momentum. And before moving on to the final question, I want to remind you that videos from our various channels on physics, mathematics, and science are gathered in one place on our Telegram channel. I highly recommend subscribing to it. You can also support all our initiatives there. And the question will be this. We know that it is most convenient to push regular swings when they pass the lowest point, because at that moment, the power being applied, which is equal to the product of force and velocity, will be maximized due to the fact that the velocity is at its maximum. And at what exact moments should one precisely invest in this particular device, considering the best possible time to make such an investment? Please share your thoughts and opinions on this matter in the comments of this video on YouTube.